you hear me talk automatically, I know what's going through your head. I know. Let me, let me tell you first of all, I'm a mathematics professor. I'm a scientist. A rocket scientist. Yeah. So I'm logical, I'm educated. Have you ever thought about what angels look like? Yeah. <laughs> Growing up, I was told that angels had lightning bolt faces and fire coming out of their eyes and solid chrome arms and legs and they had voices like thunder. It was kind of like some kind of car that John Travolta would would drive. Not something that sits on a Christmas tree, but I went home to Alabama <laughs> over the holidays back in 2010, and I was driving around to the places that had so many memories, sweet memories for me, like the Waffle House. <laughs> like, like the parking lot and the empty building where the Kmart used to be. <laughs> I also have this intersection that I like to go to. It's got, I usually go through it two or, two or three times. I had car trouble there one time. It was, I was 16 years old and I called my daddy. I was on a date. He came back. He was, he, he was real kind. He came. He looked in the car, he said, son, pop the hood. I popped the hood. Then he said, son, come out here, I want to show you something. So I got out of the car. When I got out there, he whispered to me, have you thought about putting it in park? <laughs> anyway, I got back in the car. <laughs> Daddy shut the hood. I put it in park. Everything worked. My daddy's, he's smart. <laughs> About that time, I was still having these wonderful memories, and, and my cell phone rang. I looked down, and it was a call from Gary, Indiana. I didn't know anybody in Gary, Indiana, but it was around the holiday, so I figured it was a student complaining about a grade or perhaps offering their mama up for a better grade or something like that. <laughs> but, uh, so I answered the phone. I said, hello, this is Professor Hurd. And on the other end of the line, an older lady said, my goodness, I'm sorry. I think I've made a mistake and called you by accident. I could tell in her voice that she was much older. And I said, that's OK. Just hearing your voice has made my day better. So we talked. We talked and we talked some more. About 15 minutes into the conversation, I pulled off the side of the road into a parking lot and started writing things down on Jack's hamburger napkins with a number two Ticonderoga pencil. This was good stuff, all right? Well, about 15 minutes into it, she finally said, my name is Phyllis, like Phyllis Diller. I said, yes, ma'am, that's, that's nice. She also said, you know, I'm black. And before, I, I didn't know what to say, but before I could say anything, she said, with a little Chickahominy Indian. I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> but then, then she says, but I look Puerto Rican. I said, okay. I have curly hair. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I was dumbfounded. I said, I'm white. My daddy had olive skin. He was a sailor. My mama was a missionary. I mean, what do I say? We talked and we talked. I learned about her husband who had died many, many years ago. I learned about her son who had died. Finally, I said, Phyllis, could I ask you a question? She said, you can ask me anything. I said, how old are you? She said, I was born in 1921, and my birthday's in February. Keep in mind, this was 2010. 
I said, are you telling me that you're going to be 90 years old in February? God willing, I'm going to be. That was the other thing about Phyllis that kind of set me back. Every two or three sentences, she would say, thank you, Jesus, or amen. Or, and it was, I could tell she meant it, and I, I liked it. It was okay. <laughs> anyway, Phyllis said, would it be all right if I were to call you back again? I said, by all means. She said, what's a good time? I said, well, between five and six. She said, well, would it be closer to five or closer to six? I, I said, closer to five is fine. She said, by this time she knew my wife's name, how many children I had. She said, now you tell your wife that a woman's going to be calling you. She may have been 89 then, but... She knew. She knew. <laughs> the next day, between five and six, closer to five than to six, <laughs> Phyllis called me. Said, Merry Christmas, bless you. We talked. I let her talk to the kids. I said, I love you. And she said, I love you. She called me the next day. She called me the next day. She called me the next day and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. <laughs> then I started calling her. It has been almost four years now, and Phyllis and I talk every day on the phone. <laughs> My mama died in 2012, and by this time I had a relationship with this woman who I have never seen, but I know who she looks like, what she looks like. I called Phyllis. I was bawling my eyes out. I can talk to her that way. I said, Phyllis, Phyllis, mama's gone. She always has an answer. Phyllis simply said, baby, don't you worry. I will be your godmother. That was it. I just, I just you know, I could feel Phyllis had some kind of communication going up. <laughs> and let me tell you the clincher on that. Phyllis, every time I talk to her, she's going to pray. And when she's in a, in a, in a pretty good mood, she's going to stretch it out. <laughs> it's going to get long, and it's going to have just this. It's, it's a mathematical function, and it's beautiful, and it's like music. But I won't get into that. <laughs> but she was talking. Praying, praying, I, I keep my mouth shut. About that time, call waiting clicks in. I say, what is she going to do? Phyllis says, hold on a second, Lord. I got to take this call. It is a very important call. <laughs> I'm on hold, and I'm saying, really? Really? Phyllis can put God on hold. She came back right in that place, in that prayer where she had left off, just going right to town. It's perfect. Well, again, between three and a half, four years, I still talk to her every day. She's got an answer for everything from politics, religion, the NBA. She knows the Chicago bulls left and right and knows all their statistics <laughs> and if you ask me again what an angel looks like I'll tell you I'll tell you she's about 93 years old now she's black with a little Chickahominy Indian <laughs> you could say she looks Puerto Rican I, I don't know but I'll tell you one thing I call her my godmother, Phyllis. <laughs>